So this is The Golden Goblin by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. The stream of molten gold flowed smoothly from the crucible, reflecting in its surface the cloudless blue of the Egyptian sky. The boy, Ronifer, slowly tightened his grip on the two stones between which he held the crucible as he tilted it farther and farther. Devotion in every careful movement of his hands and bare brown shoulders. Presently, the last drop of flame-colored liquid had run without splash or bubble into the hollowed stone. With a sigh of satisfaction, the boy set stones and crucible aside and wiped the sweat from his hands upon his cotton kilt. It was a good ingot. The goldsmith would be able to find no fault with it. Already the metal was setting, the brilliant red-yellow fading to scarlet, then to cherry. In half a minute, it could be turned out and the mold oiled for the next pouring. Dreamily, Ronifer watched the colors dull. Splendid images drifted through his mind, golden forms and shapes, any one of which might be the destiny of this very small ingot that he, Ronifer, the son of Thutra, had poured. It might become part of a wide glittering collar or the inlay on a fine dagger for some nobleman's tomb, or better, a cup fit for Pharaoh himself, shaped like a flower and hammered to fragile thinness. Well, perhaps not the cup, Ronifer admitted to himself after a little reflection. After all, it was only a small ingot. Besides, such a cup as he had pictured could never come from this particular gold house. No one here had the skill to fashion it. Not even Wreck, the goldsmith himself. Only Zhao, the greatest gold worker in all of Thebes, could make such a cup. Zhao, the master, could make anything. From his artist's fingers sprang objects of such wonderful beauty, cups, bowls, boxes, necklaces, daggers, great golden collars, bracelets, exquisite amulets, that Pharaoh himself would be served by no other goldsmith. To think, I might have been his student one day, if my father had lived. He all but said he would accept me. Oh, if only my father had not died, if I had never gone to go live with Jabu, if I had never even heard of Jabu. The unwelcome picture of Jabu's face broke through Ronifer's preoccupation, scattering his daydreams and rousing him to present reality in which Zhao the master had no part of. He was aware again of voices, of the clang of tools around him in the mud-walled courtyard and the sharp, hot odor of melting, mingling with the soft afternoon breeze from the Nile. It was the mother of Hathor in the season of growing, and the air was cool despite the heat from the Lord Ra, the sun, and it did not scorch and burn in this pleasant wintertime, but shed its radiant light beneficently upon the brown backs of the men bent to their work, striking blue gleams from their ink-black hair and snowy kilts, glancing with binding intensity of gold ingots and gold wire coils and the scraps and bits of gold that littered the low work tables. Instead of an answering sense of peace, Ronifer only felt the sore and familiar longing for the other days, when he could have rejoiced in a gentle son and work, done work that he loved, when both his father Thutra and Zhao the Goldmaster were part of his life, a large part, and his brother Jabu the Stonecutter was no part at all. And that's the introduction to the Golden Goblet by Eloise Jarvis McGraw.